Welcome, brothers and sisters, to Praying Through the Psalter, a brief daily meditation upon the great prayer songs of the Bible. Today is devotional 148, and if you'll turn with me in the scriptures to Psalm 140. Psalm 140. As you do so, I remind us of how we chiefly interpret the Psalms. First, we say that these are the prayers of God to us, that they may become our prayers lifted back to him in worship and devotion. Secondly, the Psalms teach us how to pray, what to pray for. And finally, every Psalm is messianic, that is, it reveals Jesus, the Messiah. Today, in Psalm 140, we're continuing now in this um, second to last section of the Psalter in the collection of Psalms called the Psalms of David. And these will last now through 145, and then the last section of the Psalter, Psalms 146 through 150, provide a great crescendo of praise to the Almighty God. But here we are in Psalm 140, and David is lifting uh, before the Lord a, a lament. Uh, as we have seen over and over throughout our time in the Psalter, David was under great stress physically, emotionally, and spiritually. His enemies were always about him. Sometimes we think of the king and we think, wow, we would aspire to be a king or a queen. How, how wonderful it must be and comfortable to live in a, in a, in a palace and, and have servants and food and entertainment. But the reality is King David lived under constant duress and the threat of his enemies. So his prayers reflect that. Not so much different for us. We may not be kings and queens. But we know about spiritual battles and spiritual warfare. And uh, we know that we are surrounded and that we are in the midst of such spiritual warfare all the time. And so prayers like Psalm 140 can make a lot of sense and become very personal prayers for us too. So the context is that some very malicious slanders have uh, made accusations against David that are false and hurtful and harmful. And he is praying, Lord, uh, please let those who would seek um, to destroy my reputation, let those slanders be the ones who instead find your judgment. And so David prays in a way that becomes an important teaching for us. Psalm 140 begins with a prayer of confidence. And then it moves into the petition, the need of the prayer. And then it ends also with a prayer of confidence in God. So confidence in God, the need that we bring before him, and then confidence in God. So, so we trust in God, and that trust brackets any petition that we bring to God. Why do we pray? Why do we lift him to our concerns, our laments? Because we have confidence in him, we trust in him. How do we know that he hears our prayers? and that he's concerned for us, and that he will send help for us because of our confidence in God, our trust in him. Confidence, petition, confidence is a great way to frame all the prayers that we make. Listen to how David starts, Psalm 140, verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from all evil men. Preserve me from all violent men who plan evil things in their heart and stir up wars continually. They make their tongue sharp as serpents, and under their lips is the venom of asps. So there is coming to God. He's praying for deliverance because he trusts in God. He has confidence in God. And then verses 4 through 11, uh, David details um, the, um, the, the wickedness that these malicious slanders would bring against him. And David prays with an imprecatory prayer that that they would be the ones who would be judged, and that God would, would stop them in their, um, in their tracks so that they cannot harm David anymore. And then, after the petition, Psalm 140 ends then again with a note of confidence. In verse 12, I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the afflicted and will execute justice for the needy. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name, the upright shall dwell in your presence. So like David, you and I, brothers and sisters, live in a world that is radically opposed to God and the righteousness of God. What God says is right, 
almost at every point the world says, no, that's wrong. We think that right is something opposed to that. And so if you and I would be bold in our faith, if we just speak up in love and truth, the word of God, if we should post things on social media, if we should have conversations with friends, if, if we should make um, our confidence in the word of God and in the righteous rules and commandments and law of God, what we say and speak and live, we will also be faced with malicious slander. We will also be faced with those who would, who would destroy our reputation and mock and ridicule us for saying such things of scriptural truth. And so Psalm 140 is a great teaching. Uh, number one, it says you can have confidence in God. And number two, it says the faithful will be bold because they have confidence in God. We're in a great spiritual warfare, brothers and sisters. In the 21st century, we simply cannot afford to be quiet with our faith. We need to speak up, but to do so, we know that we'll get rebuked, uh, we'll get slandered. But we speak up, we, we suffer slander. Why? Because we know that God is with us. We can trust him. And that at the end of the day, what is right and true will win the day according to the word of God. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his full confidence and give you his peace. In the name of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.